Yeah. Hi. Hello, everyone. This is Shandraj. Welcome to Agile Biz Leaders. This is an initiative to have a global knowledge sharing platform in the domains of leadership, agile, and project management. You can join me and help me with that either by subscribing to this channel or sharing my videos to our friends. All right. So having said that, let us get into today's topic. We are currently discussing some of the leadership ideas from uh, MRD Sloan School of Management. Today's topic is six ways to embrace data driven initiatives. So this article has been published uh, a couple of weeks before in MRD Sloan. Uh, why does it matter? Change management is the uh, secret sauce for driving return on investment in data centric initiatives. Here we're going to look at some of the neuroscience behind employee engagement in times of change. So let's begin. Employee acceptance is uh, critical in this to embrace data-driven strategies, but change is never easy. Workers generally worry about you know, their job. They're worried about their work-life balance. They're worried about their workload. So change management is a secret sauce for driving ROA in these moments. Companies that do it successfully, that means companies that do change management successfully are three times more likely to meet the objectives than the companies that don't. Right? This is as per you know, change management experts who are affiliated with global digital services firm West Monroe. As a leader, we need to understand or recognize that employees are naturally resistant to change. This selection is called the inch curve. So this model borrowed from the field of psychology explains why adjustment is not immediate or linear, but is predictable. Our brains are hardwired to resist change. The amygdala, a region of the brain that processes emotions, responds before our prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for impulse control and problem solving. So essentially, we feel before we think. The change curve of employee adaptation the begins with an awareness of a change, then seeks into uninformed optimism before often spiraling downward. So it's always starts with you are not really aware. You are going to do, you are going to about your business and then you hear a little a bit of information. Oftentimes it's aspirational. Gen A is going to make all our jobs easier. It's a little bit of uninformed optimism. Then the reality sets in and Amygdala has to work. People wonder that what changes might mean for their jobs and security. The second thing you need to understand is, as a leader, remember that emotions are contagious. Because change is often destabilizing, effective managers model excitement, knowing that 
they stand a good chance of seeing that positivity mirrored in their employees. You have all been in rooms where you have a leader who is super energized and passionate and excited and you cannot help but feel that optimism. We have also all been in rooms where people come in very stretch, stressed, demanding, frustrated and lacking passions. You immediately feel that too. The brain relies on external cues and connections from others to determine a person's mood. Positive, solution-focused conversation makes it more palatable. In fact, within two hours of being with others in a similar mindset, heartbeats sink and people share the mood of the room's most emotionally expressive person. So in this case, ideally the change manager, the way you show up matters. The third thing you need to understand, realize that leaders and people managers have different roles. Executive level leaders set strategies and oversee outcomes. They frame the inspirational overarching business case for change. Middle tier change managers sign on a granular level. They are in a position to, to make a personal, persuasive case for change. They can explain what change will really mean for employees in terms of workflow. They can manage skepticism and model optimism. People managers and supervisors are critical in transformation. They really need to ensure they are involved and know the kind of impacts that a transformation is going to have on a team that they understand where people need to go for support. So these are the critical roles in any transformation. Fourth thing you need to understand is pass to allow line workers to catch up to the front runners. So when it comes to the transformation, not everyone starts from the same place. Executives aware of change, in it, uh, change initiatives from their inception have heard more time to adjust than employees swallowing new information at a company-wide meeting. Respect the difference. As a leader, you need to remember that you have way more information. You have to remember what your teams are. You need to slow down and make sure you are tending to that change curve for your teams and thinking about what they need to move through. Are they at the awareness stage? Do they need more information for understanding? Next idea you can think about is name it to Damn it. Just like any new product, company initiatives deserve branding and internal marketing to flourish. A motto, a t shirt, a hashtag. Right? So, change really and truly is something that should be branded. It should have a name. Right? So, things that are memorable start to spread. Change really and truly is something that should be branded, branded, right? So it's definitely got to engage both heart and mind. So that's why modern data officers can tell stories not only through numbers, but also through anecdotal wins, right? They are data savvy, but they also have soft skills. So there are folks who can make that bridge and help bring that heart piece to them to meet the brand. So storytelling is an option. Storytelling, discussing small but important wins, encouraging employees to share their own is a key at outside of a large project. So it helps employees shift from uh, being adopters to stakeholders. The final idea is identify fast followers and reward 
early effects. Rewards and recognition program matter. They affirm buying, create allegiance, and can create a domino effect of infectious enthusiasm. Instead of trying to charm skeptics who might contaminate public opinion, capitalize on fast followers. Fast followers are the team members who are typically highly engaged and are known as early adopters. So the philosophy is don't spend a lot of time on skeptics unless it's someone who is highly influential within the organization. So know who are your fast followers or to make sure that you can create this momentum and generate a movement. So when you think about human ROI, especially around the readiness, a lot of it is perception driven. Perception is reality. So you have, you have got to manage that perception or that readiness component before launching something new or big. So with that, we'll come to the conclusion of this particular video. Hope you guys got a better understanding how to go about change management for a data-driven initiatives. We talked about six important neuroscience-based ideas. We talked about people are hardwired for resistance. We talked about people look at emotional. So as a leader, you need to be more positive and vibrant in nature. We talked about change should be branded. We talked about the different roles like executive leadership, change managers, and the line managers. You need to use them very effectively. Right? So we also talked about the speed at which your follower is going to adopt you. As a leader, you might have better information, but your followers may not have it. So you need to give them the pass. You need to give them that you know, uh, patience and time to adopt. So finally, we talked about you have to brand it. And then we talked about one important thing of dealing with the perception. Right? You can catch up your fast followers, the people who are highly engaged, who are early adopters. Use them and spread the momentum. Right? So now tell me how you are handling change management, the transformation initiatives in your company. You can share your thoughts in the comment section. I hope you guys like these kind of videos. That helps you to become a better leader. Right. So with that, I'm signing off. See you in the next video.